That's good. I'll be like, Wayne. Hey everyone, welcome to Wine and Real Estate. Oh no. Hey everyone, welcome to Wine and Real Estate. So we're doing something different again today. Um, so I have one of my friends here, Alex, Alex, Alexandre Morier. Um, and we want to talk about some nice wine. Um, we're going to have um, Spanish wine today. So it's a uh, from the Rioja. Well, I don't say it properly. How do you say it? I would say Rioja. Rioja. Yeah, it's a Crianza Tempranillo, Tempranillo 2016. So uh, just to get it started, we need to air it a little bit. So I don't know if you're good with the swirl. Oh, I might have already tasted it. Yeah, too late. <laughs> We're not supposed to judge uh, wine by the first sip. So anyways, it needs to be aerated a bit. And Alex has an interesting background. So I wanted to share it with you and just talk about um, what you've done. So you've actually traveled quite a bit more than I have. So <laughs> tell us about you. Well, I guess, uh, I don't know, where do I start? Maybe I'll start uh, with where I, I met Francois. I, uh, I had just come back uh, actually from Spain and um, it had been, uh, I would say, uh, four years since I was living in, in uh, Spain and uh, before that in uh, London in the UK. And uh, when I came back to Ottawa, I said, OK, let's uh, I want to start investing. I want to go into uh, the property business and I want to use all the skills I have to kind of start something and so I, I remember going on a, on a meetup uh, and finding one of these uh, Ottawa real estate groups and I believe it was the first day the first or the first event yeah that yeah, Francois it was. hosted and it must have been in January or Feb yeah January I think 25th if I remember correctly and it was in partnership with the right club so the right club was sponsoring us and that's how I met Alex and we've been working on potential deals. Nothing has panned out yet, but uh, we've been trying and we've, we've, we've been giving uh, constant deposits, but the money <laughs> eventually always comes back. Unfortunately, I'd like to have the money stay where it is. Uh, but you know, we've been, we've been uh, trying all sorts of deals and, and in each and every case, learning what's possible, what's not possible. So at this, Point in time, I would say uh, we've kind of <laughs> we've had a lot of experiences, a lot of uh, stressful events, yeah. and uh, I think we're we're ready to take on kind of any scenario. And that's the thing. Like now, we're kind of uh, honing our instincts, and we know like okay, if this happens, this is how we respond, or if this happens, this is how we respond. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just going through an example, there was a nice project in uh, Eastern Ontario. Lorignal and the project anyway there was some potential redevelopment and Alex's background like you studied architecture you studied engineering so you have a good base or a um, good instinct for land kind of land development how like zoning and things like that so that project was very exciting uh, but it, maybe it was a little too big for us uh, as a starting point uh, you need a good base for private lenders and um, that project would have required quite a bit of private money uh, to start off and then like to really reset it and make it uh, cash flow so i think yeah like, like you said my i guess my first career was in engineering i studied civil engineering and uh, with that i kind of started from the very basic stuff of like roads and pipes and uh, all the math and the, the science to things and um, I eventually went into architecture and eventually I kind of try to use those skills and leverage it into a, more of a business world of kind of with money. What, it, what does it mean? So I guess my experience and my forte is working with all the professionals and putting all the pieces together and try to make some kind of usually complex technical stuff a bit more accessible and easy to understand for others. And, and that's why on that project, it was kind of a good, good team because I've got, I guess I'm bringing the kind of technical side and um how to get the best value of like all the stakeholders in the uh, construction industry and francois he has like his own instincts in marketing with yeah. people and and all his his, his previous experience with, with rentals and I, I thought it was it was a good match we just uh, together our pockets maybe weren't that deep yeah <laughs> yeah i think it would have required like a few hundred thousands yeah, to start off. So just maybe not the right time, but it was a great learning experience. 
and Alex actually spoke with the municipality, so we learned something. The municipality was quite open to suggestions and some ideas, so that was great. We learned about uh, applications, variances, surveys, urban uh, like requirements, and we did a lot of emails and we kind of found these different software that tell you what kind of land you have and what you can do and what you can't do. So we actually had a full plan really developed. And I think in a lot of our, uh, like, you know, a lot of our strategies or, or projects that we were looking to go to, I think one of the things we learned too is that there's not always one recipe, of course. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a lot of it is a lot of sequences. So it's like, not only is not, not a lot of recipes, but, it's like, what, this is the appetizer, this is the main course, this is the dessert. And it's like each one of these, you're, you're going through and you're like, okay, well, we need to have a certain phase where we do this with the, the amount of money we have. And then we use that bit of money to get us to the second bit. Yeah. And then we refinance, get a third. So a lot of these things for a single property, you, kinda, you, you do have to break it down. And it's not just a few month thing. It really is a long term thing, but you have to know kind of your five year plan the at the start. Thing. <laughs> yeah, the start. Yeah, when when you make the offer, you need to know what's your end goal. Like we always talk, Jennifer and I, we talk about the exit strategy. So maybe that's what wasn't strong enough in some of the projects, having the exit in mind. Like, because you need to have that in mind and to convince the lenders. So you're borrowing that money. How how are you going to reimburse the person that you're borrowing from? So having that strategy is very important, and it needs to be part of your plan all the way through. And I, I guess another way I see it is, you know, money is nice, but if it's not your money, you have to realize that it, it kind of weighs you down a bit metaphorically. Yeah. So what do you do with that extra weight, you know? So how do you try to shed the most weight from that money? Because all, you know, money is nice, but from a private lender, if you're, if you have to pay 12% per month, the first thing you want to do is figure out how you can get rid of that 12%. Exactly. So you want to negotiate your best deal, but you also want to have it attractive enough so that the private lenders are willing to give you money. So it's always kind of looking, what is the, the, I guess the best value money I can get. And when do I need to start paying for this money? And, and then what, how do I get rid of the, the kind of requirements of that money? And if you can kind of, you know, in all of those things, you really have to, 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 to understand all the angles because sometimes just the way you form your business plan, you can actually get uh, much better rates than others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The rates you're learning that right now the hard way. <laughs> Unfortunately, we just had a discussion. So Alex, uh, with a partner, is buying a, a bungalow that's very well suited for a single, uh, a secondary dwelling unit. And at first, I think it was all private lending, and possibly a B lender. Uh, B and then maybe even an A lender. So it makes a big difference. I mean, a uh, private lending could be 10, 12, 14% interest. A uh, B lender is how much in your experience right now? I, I would say the B lender is about 4%, maybe three and, a, three and a half to four and a half. Plus the points. Yeah, plus you have to pay like a sign on fee. So it can be anything from three, four, five thousand for your lender and then the equivalent amount from your broker. So all of a sudden, like even though 4% is more attractive than a 12%, you might get hit with another five, 10,000 in fees just to get that on. And, and, uh, but that's the price because if you, you don't have that, you just don't have an A lender option. So I guess if you're, if you're looking to get your first place, it's important to know what you can get with your A lender and how you would get a second A lender in the, a few years time or a f certain amount of time, because, um, after a certain amount of months, you, you won't be able to get a second A lender. You'll have to be, you'll be forced to go for some private lending. Exactly. So how's the wine? I would say, uh, so this is your Rioja region, is the Tempranillo? Yeah. Yes. That's the grape, it's the best uh, Spanish The best grape, grape in, in Spain. Have you ever picked any uh, Tempranillo? I have not. No. Uh, no, I did not get the chance. I, I've eaten a lot of uh, strawberries. But oh yeah, are they grow strawberries? <laughs> okay. uh, more and more in the Orleans region. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh -huh. I get it now. So this wine has been made with Rioja's native grapes following a century old tradition. It has spent over a year in oak barrels. So it is oak. That's what I'm tasting. And um, before rounding off, it's aging in the bottle for six months. So it's four years old. I can, I can taste the difference. I buy, I buy a lot of inexpensive wines. Uh, some of them are more like a year or two old. This one is four years old. 
Um, so discover its distinctive fresh red fruit notes. Are you tasting any? I am fruit? actually. Yeah. Okay, cool. And our crianza is versatile and easy to pair from pastas to spicy dishes. Serve at 64 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure what that would be. <laughs> Probably 14, 14 or 15. So it should be a little bit colder. We're yeah. drinking at room temperature. So it's a little too warm. I should have chilled it. I apologize. It's actually, yeah, it's a Taking right. Taking away from your experience there. <laughs> I would say it's a quite fun wine. It's it's not too heavy. It's yeah. not too, uh, it's kind of light. It's fun for a red wine. It's kind of nice. And that's the thing too, I find with some red wines, when you chill them, it makes them even lighter. So let's say sometimes you find it's too full bodied. It tastes lighter when it's, it, it becomes more like a Pinot Noir or something. Mm. So anyway, if you know Pinot Noir. So this is great, great conversation. Chin, uh, yeah, salut. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, um, so uh, again about real estate. So Jennifer and I, again, kind of like Alex, uh, you're working on some other projects right now. We're also working on some projects. Uh, we met with a private lender on Friday and uh, we're uh, expecting the funds this week and the funds will help us uh, finance some renovations at our private home. So we're going to add some rooms, uh, one of our uh, duplexes and then, an, and then a deposit on another property. So it's a great way of just building your network. You have to know the people. Uh, just be confident about what you ask for and having all the exit strategies and hopefully eventually we can do business with Alex. <laughs> I think it, if not, then we'll just share <laughs> tips and tricks and <laughs> drink some wine. <laughs> yeah, it's been, I think we had uh, three properties, three very different properties. The first was a bungalow. The second was a, uh, 16 unit apartment. And the third one was a six unit, six units with, um, it was really nice in new new Edinburgh and it was backing on another street so we could have had um, another piece of land that we could have severed or built on but it didn't cash flow and yeah it was just and uh, again a very uh, it was a little bit bigger than what we were ready for I think uh, almost though we're like six hundred thousand dollar deposits not that bad I, I remember when twenty five thousand seemed like a lot then fifty then a hundred now 200, I'm, I'm okay, but 600 is still a little, a little bit high yeah. for me, uh, just for now. You just have to scale like smart in a smart way. And I think um, I'm thinking the three properties are, are the lowest would have been around the 400,000 range and the highest yeah. was about 1.8 million. Yes. But the, it, with our business plans we had in mind, I think they would have gone up resale value for the 400 maybe up to 600 and for the the one the eight hundred thousand dollar property we could have oh, we could double. have definitely yeah double triple oh, could, yeah triple yeah because we had found a land that had a lot of uh, opportunity for for new buildings on it so essentially um some of the buildings we were looking at some of the properties we we're looking at is what can we, what else can we build on this land and without necessarily having to demolish what you have. So that's another no, thing. Exactly. How do you add value? It's very important. It's actually essential. How do you add value to property? That's how you're able to, to continue to grow. Uh, that's what Jennifer and I are doing. One of our duplex, it's got a walkout basement. So it's going to become a triplex and it's already zoned for a fourplex. So we don't even have to oh, wow. apply for a variance, nothing. We just apply, I mean, for the building permits, of course, but uh, it's very simple, so that's an easy way. Um, so at building on your land, we're looking at um, another triplex and it's zoned for a fourplex and then there's space where you could add a fourth unit. So it's a great way of building value, being able to refinance and get more wine out of it. So <laughs> that's the most important thing. <laughs> get more juice out of those grapes. Yeah, more grapes. So. Um, yeah, so that's it. So uh, I wanted as well to discuss. So Alex, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the Right Club on October 28th, we're hosting a, um, a meetup online. So it's virtual with everything going on. And we're going to be focusing on Ottawa. So it's going to be just the Ottawa market and how to be successful in Ottawa, even with the, the high prices, properties selling way over asking. Uh, it is possible to be successful. 
Uh, there's some great investors like Razna Arora, so she's going to be a guest speaker and she's been buying like right, left and center in the Ottawa area and being very successful. So I think it's going to be a great addition. I'm definitely going to join this one. Yeah, perfect. Cool. And uh, for wine and real estate too, we're, we're having more and more guests. So on Wednesday, we had Mandy Branham, the JV queen. And uh, now we have Alex, the uh, engineering and architect king. <laughs> <laughs> and on um, Tuesday, I have Karina Guzman coming on and she's going to be talking about land assembly. So another exciting topic, uh, buying multiple properties and reassembling land to get it rezoned. And that's something you do at work as well, I think. Yeah, it is. Uh, like you have a team, but... And there's just like there's a lot of phases once you get the property, there's a lot of ways that you can on paper change how much your property is worth without actually having doing uh, much at all physically so and and a lot of that i believe uh, karina guzman is going to talk about but understanding that if you have a piece of land how how far is it from someone actually being able to come in and start digging and there's all these steps that come in and can take anything from a few months to a few years to get there but you know you have variances you need to bring in services you need to get the uh, variance approvals, you need to get the heights, you need to get drawings, you get permits. So there's quite a long process to get there. And the more you're kind of familiar with that, the more you can, uh, at each step of, these, of, of the way, uh, get uh, appraisals and financing to kind of increase what that property is worth. Yeah, exactly. And that's like the delay. Some people don't realize how long it takes to, to do some rezoning. I had a crazy project near my house here on Paget Road. There's a house I was looking at. I'm like, oh, it's great. The lot is super wide. Let's remove the house and sever the land. And then I was told, well, this might take two years. So you have to be able to afford the property for two years before you're even able to sever the lot, remove the house, and then build a new place. So two years is a little far for me. I, I like quick. <laughs> yeah. So, well, not just that, you just have to be ready. You have to have the plan in place, the system, which I don't have yet. So very important to build a solid foundation, having the systems in place and the team. Which is why going into the most deals you can, even if they don't uh, fall through, is, is, is super important because you can't learn it all at once. You have to kind of go area by area. And if at some point, each one of those lessons you're going to put together and that's what's going to make your, your kind of successful uh, project, your successful property. But if you don't know, you kind of, you can get dinged without even knowing it or in the future you made a very innocuous decision and it's going to follow you three years down the line. Oh, because you didn't sign this or this item, uh, we won't be able to refinance you, for example. Exactly. Oh, and that reminds me, we actually had bid on that project in New Brunswick. Was that our first one? Uh, yes, we didn't, yeah, we didn't get that didn't one. Didn't get that one, so it's four <laughs> projects. Uh, but really, that's like even for Jennifer and I, I think we've bid on oh, like 60 to 80 properties, and we probably get five or six out of those. So you just keep bidding and trying, and you have to analyze properties and crunch numbers. And, and you always need money aside for the deposit because when your offer is accepted, you do need to put some money in. So Alex learned all about that. <laughs> we had to do some crazy uh, rearranging of money and you're giving the deposit and I'm giving the deposit. So always something to consider. Uh, real estate does require some money somewhere, like just a little bit, but you need to start with some cash. Um, wasn't too much, like five, five and 10,000, so about 10,000. Yeah, I think I had, yeah, we had 15,000 in, uh, I put it in, in Locked deposit. up in deposits, yeah, so yeah. for a few months. And then the banks sometimes are not very nice. It's the money, oh, your daily limit is only this much. And so it's all things you learn and you have to consider when you're venturing into real estate and how much will the deposit be? Because it's very exciting. My op offer has been accepted, but now you need $5,000 tomorrow. <laughs> to exactly. Hold it, so. And if it falls through, you might not get your deposit back for a few weeks or a month. Because I think in our yeah, case, yeah, how long was it? Took about two months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it took us a month to get the conditions uh, unapproved to figure yes. out it didn't work, and then it was another other month because we sent the money in Ottawa, but then it went to their main branch in Toronto, and then I had to, to go through the whole systems through their accountant, and then mailed in person and. So it took, yeah, it took a while. And then my bank, of course, it came to my bank and then my bank only allows 
so much for e-transfers, but you can do it cash. So it was a lot of fun. We had to transfer cash and $50 bills, thousands of dollars. So yeah, you want to make sure you get that, like do somewhere safe or... <laughs> and, and, and I guess as you know, or you, you must know, uh, with most lenders, you have a 90-day uh, period where they check all your funds. So if you have a 5, 10 or 20% down, well, you need to show the source of each of those funds. So if you're taking out money for these kinds of deposits and anything, you need to make sure you have a paper trail. So this was yes. another another kind of revelation. Yeah. If, if I'm giving uh, money towards an agreement or a thing, I need to have a letter. I need to have proof, scans, anything you, you, you anything is better than nothing because there's a lot of uh, empty money laundering requirements. And, yeah. and if they don't receive it, you're, Money uh, isn't really worth anything to them, so they won't. They won't accept that five or ten thousand that you put on the deposit if, if you don't show that it's it, it was for the your money and it was for a deposit. Exactly. So, yeah, it was quite a learning experience. And anyway, we'll keep you posted. I think uh, this has been great. Thank you very much for coming on Wine and Real Estate. And I know you tease me about my wine and my real estate. But <laughs> anyway, it's it's a lot of fun just to chat and a good excuse to drink some new wine. I'm taking some courses so I become better, more knowledgeable with my wine. And instead of just reading the label, I'm going to learn about the wine. <laughs> and actually, uh, Jennifer and I, last weekend, was it last weekend or the weekend before? Last weekend, we were picking some grapes in Prince Edward County where we bought a little cottage. That's part of the reason why we bought it for the family, for the investment, but also for the, the wine, so the grapes. Um, and you learn quite a bit by meeting the uh, the winemakers and all that. So it's just making it fun. So I find it's good to tie in, in real estate with a passion. So I think Alex, you have a passion for design and development and looking at possibilities. So well, I, I, yeah, I guess my you were talking about your passion and you've kind of kind of relocates temporarily down south of Ontario for this, and that's kind of one of my objectives as as well. Is right now I'm kind of. Uh, everything is going in all in right now and it's a bit more difficult starting yeah. but they, the goal is to kind of start gently kind of uh, decreasing the amount of responsibilities to to have kind of relocate and, and, and kind of use my passion of travel within my work so. cool great well happy Thanksgiving everyone and uh, until the next time so on Tuesday with Karen and Guzman and I hope you'll tune in it's going to be a very good uh, episode so have a good evening. Salud. Pleasure chatting. Thank you. Bye.